Hello, and welcome back to another video of Calc Nerd. So for today's video, I'm going to be explaining the get key command, uh, what it does, uh, how the buttons are numbered, uh, different functions of the get key command, and kind of how you use it in programs. Uh, so this has been a requested video for a little while, so I decided that I would uh, make a video on this because it is quite an interesting topic and something that you use uh, for user input in pretty much every TI Basic program. So without further ado, let's get on into it. Okay, now I'm going to be covering uh, more on the get key stuff. Uh, this is a simple little program that you can pause the video and copy down if you would like. I will be also making this code so it'll be kind of like a little game where you can just move around on the screen. Uh, and I will also do what the X code is, but I'm going to do that for you guys while explaining it because I think that will be helpful. So first we're going to cover how you figure out what a button is because every button in TI Basic is assigned to a number except really for the on key because it is used for breaking programs. It doesn't really have a number. So just for the purposes of this video though, I'm going to use it um, just so it's not confusing. You can kind of just exclude it, but it still is in that last uh, row right there. So to figure out what number a button is, I'm just going to be using uh, the first row right here. So this is the first row of buttons. Uh, it does not start here, it starts at the top here. So this is the second row here. The third row, which only has four buttons, and the second row has six buttons right there. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, the fourth row, fifth row, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. An easy way to tell uh, what row you're in, you can use the seven button and just remember that the seven button is in the seventh row. It's just kind of a little trick that you can use if you would like. So because we have established the rows, the row always comes first. So this is the first row. So the prefix of the number will always be a one. And then it is the first button, the Y equals button right here, is the first button in the first row. So the prefix of one, and then it's the first button, so it gets another one. So the Y equals button is 11. So if K was equal to 11, that means the Y equals button uh, would be uh, what that means. So 21, 31, 41, 51, 61, 71, 81, 91, and then technically the on doesn't really have one. So I'll just skip that. So it'd be the same numbering for all that stuff. So if you want to figure out, let's say, what the clear button is, which is a helpful one to know if you do not know what it is, uh, we'll just figure it out and I'll tell you uh, what it is. So it is in the one, two, three, fourth row, and it is in the one, two, three, four, fifth column. Therefore, clear is 45. Uh, that is a very helpful one to know along with enter, uh, which is key number 105, because it's in the 10th row, and the fifth column. So I'm now going to, now that we have done most of the buttons, I'm going to cover what the arrow keys are because those are the most confusing. Uh, and also, if you did not uh, check out the description, there is a link in the description so that you can see the button mapping. It's a very helpful one on TI Basic Developer. It has the positions of all the buttons and the number that they are. are. So it's uh, very helpful. Uh, for doing that and my calculator turned off there um, so if you need to figure out what the arrow keys are the second row here is the three buttons here and the third row is this uh, last button here so it is 24 for the left arrow key 25 for the up arrow key 26 for the right arrow key and 34 for the down arrow key so as you can see y plus k is equal to 34, which is the down arrow key, minus k is equal to 25, the up arrow key, store into y. And what this statement is saying is y plus, and because it is in parentheses, it gets evaluated. Uh, if you know what PEMDAS is, uh, this is kind of uh, applicable here. So because it's evaluating the statement here, it, the statement can either be true or false. A true will return a one, and a false will return a zero. 
So if k is equal to 34, it will return a 1. Therefore, if k is equal to 34 and it returns a 1, y plus 1 minus, and k cannot equal be equal to 25 if k is equal to 34. So y plus 1 minus 0 stored in the y. So that is how it works because the screen, uh, when you click the down arrow key, uh, the first uh, row here, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then the eighth at the very bottom. Um, so that means that if you click the down arrow key, it's adding one to y, which makes sense. And an easy way to remember which one comes first, the bigger number always comes first when you're doing the arrow keys. So I'm going to go ahead and type what it would look like for x. So if you have the x, then you have plus, and then you have your Boolean logic statement right here. So uh, x plus k is equal to the number 26 first, and then we have minus k is equal to 24, store into x. And that would be our Boolean logic statement uh, for y and x. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a uh, output at y comma x uh, really quick. So output at y comma x comma quote, let's do the multiplication symbol, why not? And I also need to put get key in this loop uh, because I just put it at the beginning of the program uh, just because I thought it kind of looked a little bit nicer. So I'm going to do get key store into k. You often store get key into k. It's just something that a lot of programmers do because it just kind of makes sense. Uh, the key would be k, so yeah. Now that we have uh, this mini program here, I'm going to go ahead and run it and just show you what it would do. And I will show you uh, how to make this code better uh, for reasons that I'll show you in just a second. So we're gonna execute this program, program get key. And it does not clear home, obviously, but if I click the arrow keys, uh, the asterisk or multiplication symbol will move wherever I'm clicking. And now I'll show you the downfall of this. I can go off screen. That is the one problem with this and it'll take me to the Y comma X here. Uh, and I'll show you in just a second here how you can fix that. So again, to review, for example, let's say I click the key 24, which would be the left arrow key. So if I click 24, that means that this statement here is true and this statement is false. And a false will return a zero and a true will return a one. So x plus zero minus one store into x. And because the greater values are on this side, when I click the left arrow key, it's going to subtract one from x and move it to the left. That is basically how get key works uh, and how these little statements here work. So now I told you that I was gonna show you, uh, I got a domain error, which you do not wanna have uh, in your program. So what you can do is you can insert, so second and delete uh, and put math, click the math button right here, it's just off screen, sorry about that. If you go over to numbers, you'll find max and min right here. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a min. And it seems kind of backwards, but the min, you want to have the maximum value, uh, which would be 8 for y. And then make sure you have a comma, insert the max then, have a comma, and put uh, 1. Oh, whoops, I put the comma in the wrong spot. I apologize about that and put the comma right there. So you have min eight max one, y plus k is equal to 34, minus k is equal to 25, store in y. So that is often what the code looks like, and now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the x, only the min will be 16, and the max will be one. And after I've completed that, uh, and you can do them in either order, I like doing min first though, uh, just so I don't forget, and then max is normally one unless uh, you have like a custom border or something around your program, uh, then you have that. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this again. And what the result, oh, whoops, I'm going to break it actually and get rid of all the stuff on the home screen. 
So what it should be like, if I click the down arrow key again, you can see that I do not get a domain error because it cannot go off the boundaries of the screen. And that is what the min and max accomplishes. So basically, it's a really easy way to accomplish uh, not getting a domain error. And then you might say, well, okay, so I have all this stuff on the screen. How do I get rid of that? Well, I can show you a way to do that as well. The easy solution would just be to do clear home. Uh, but in certain instances in games, sorry, instances in games, uh, there may be uh, stuff on the screen that you do not want to delete. So for example, uh, Minesweeper is a game that I've created and I couldn't do that. And this is actually one of the first games uh, that I utilized this. So something that is really useful, and I'm gonna go ahead and add an end down here, uh, which you'll see why in just a second. So now I'm going to add an if statement. So if k, oh, whoops, sorry. I need to get the sum of k, sum k is equal to, and don't worry, I'll explain this in just a second. Uh, so if sum of k is equal to 24 comma 25 comma 26 comma 34, and then I'm going to do a colon right there and then. So after I've added that, uh, what that means is if the sum of the list of k is equal to, so and if any of these values, so if I click 24, 25, 26, or 34, then it will do this. So what I've created is a little loop, so I know if k is pressed. So then I can say, okay, before I update whatever key you press, so let's say I up, uh, am going to press the up key. So I have now established that yes, he has clicked the up key. Uh, he has clicked k is equal to 25. So this activates this list, or sorry, this if statement. So then what I can do is I can output at y comma x a space. So now when I run the program, it should, oh, whoops, again, uh, my apologies. I should have added a clear home, uh, but I have not. So now when I run the program, my little asterisk will output a space behind wherever it is and it will move freely around the screen. So that is a simple uh, solution to that problem which you may encounter while programming. Uh, you just use the if sum of k is equal to a fancy bracket and then the list of the keys that you have and a then and then an end at the end of your if then statement. So that is a really simple tutorial on get key. Uh, if there's something that I did not cover in this video, feel free to leave it down in the comments. I can make another video if it's a really big topic or I can respond to your comment. Uh, feel free to leave comments down in my videos. I love uh, responding to comments and reading them, uh, so feel free to do that. Uh, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.